Rescue, Data and Repair. My name is Dr. Ben and here we have an iPhone X which was mailed in by a customer because it doesn't work anymore at all. Data are pretty important and I don't know what up with the phone. I didn't check anything. I just saw that the screws on the button are not integrated um, or are not screwed in. So now I will just have a look what, uh, what's the problem with the device and um, just get access to the data on this device that is what I want to do here so this is the device because we have no screws in here and you see it already was opened like it looks we just turn it off yes we have no clue anymore at all and yeah okay this was already opened before um, we have an iPhone X um, battery is connected no shield on it the first thing i want to do is just to check for um, boot voltages so is there a short circuit or not can the device boot or not i don't know anything about that so i emulate 4.2 volts with my dc power supply oh we're going directly to 3.3 volts um amp uh, ampere yeah okay and we hear a little beeping sound so we are short circuited here and um, that is pretty important. So let's have a look if we can find a fast way to get access for the important data on this iPhone X. So I hope you will like the video. I would be very happy if you would subscribe that channel. Um, as soon as the time, my time management allows me, I will do more videos. But by the way, it's not an iPhone X, it's uh, an iPhone XS, okay? So we have an iPhone XS. We are short circuited on the logic board, uh, about three ampere train. And um, data is pretty important. Customer mailed the phone in for a data recovery job. Um, like it looks, they already tried something like changing the battery because this is not the original battery and um, they didn't have access with that so they mailed in the phone and said hey Dr. Ben can you please recover data out of this iPhone XS and I said oh, let's have a look if we can do if I can do that yeah sure so no component related problem so that's a thing which I already check first. So disconnect all the components and have a look if we are still short circuited. And we are so. And if we have a short circuit, the device can't boot. And we can't get access to the important data. So that's a thing we just need to manage now. And therefore, we just need to remove all the glue and all the sticky things and we need a preheater. I take this iRepair MS1, comes out of the house from Mijing and I just need the right mold, the right mold for this logic board. And here we are. Let's have a look. 190 degrees. We just wait a short time. Lift the board and let's see if we have the short circuit on the top side or on the bottom side. That's the way we act in this situation now. So my little son is uh, at hospital today. He gets the polyps removed. So actually it's um, the OP, OP, I don't know in, in uh, English, the operation, the operation. Um, but I think it will be finished within the next 30 minutes. So if my wife calls me and just wants to tell me something about, um, I just need to make a short cut here but um, normally it's not a big problem so okay give it a short time for 
letting um, the solder um, melt and after that we can just lift the board just to speed up the process a little bit I just take a little bit of, of heat from the top you see my English today isn't the best because I really didn't do English videos for a long time so I did one some some weeks ago yes um, but back in the days I did an English video every day sometimes two or three of them but that's just just not just not possible actually because we really have a small time management problem here or a big time management problem so and here we are separated the top board from the bottom board and now it's just about to see where we have the problem so just remove the thermal paste taking the battery emulation and the short circuit is on the top board so we need to get our thermal camera connect the thermal cam to the PC and let's start the application and let's drive we can give it to you here should work normally yes so many people would say now oh, okay it's a um, Tigris issue but always have a look at the rest and here you see we have one capacitor right on the top of the board here and this is killing this is killing the whole device this little cap was it this really or was it the one underneath we will see yeah it was this one yeah I was right so now normally we can boot up the device again yeah okay we have no short circuit anymore at all so now we just need to connect the both layers back together so let's turn this off go to the microscope cam show to you what I did here we had one capacitor I just removed it and we are back to life again the device will work fine again so it's a repair not only a day recovery job because we only had a little short circuit on the board on power positive VDD main so now we just clean the whole board why do we do this it's just we want to solder it back together and this this works only in a clean way so remove all that stuff then taking the bottom layer do the same here is here yeah cool 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 so and we go to the preheater again just disconnect the thermal camera <coughs> take the preheater go to the top cam we take the preheater 
put the board on. Just take some flux here. Flux over, taking the top layer board, place it. And we just wait a short time until the solder melts again. Okay, then we just use some hot air to speed up the process. So the board moves and comes back. So that's pretty okay. Now we just use some weights and nothing can happen between the board halves because in the production <coughs> Apple sets spacers between the sandwich. So on several points we have some spacing, um, some spacers and they um, they are for that if Apple presses the boards together in the production after they heated up the solder, nothing can come together. So we can't get connections between pads because of the spacers. So <clears throat> if we don't reball the board, so if we separate it and all looks fine and we can just sit it back again because we never had any issues before with the board, it's just like we can heat it up and we can use some weight to get the board back together and don't cause any short circuits, okay? So, after we just waited a short time, so one, two, three minutes, whatever, we can just sit the board back into this housing, boot up the device, and let's see if we can recover the important data on the phone. But I think this won't be an issue. Um, it's a job which we do every day here, not only me, even the other workers, which you don't see actually because it's early in the morning. And um, nobody is here actually. So, but within the next half an hour, the rest of the staff will come in and we will start to get a lot of repair and data recovery cases done. So now we just use the board and get it back into this housing here. Come on, come on, come on, go in. Ah, even more work to get the board back into the housing as to repair the board itself. So. And now we just reconnect all these FPCs. I will get all the, the screws and shields back later. It's just about to show you we have a working device again. Front flex, battery, and we need a charging cable. We need to remove this broken glass here. And let's see if this works or if, if this works not. Uh, charging current looks fine. 
Let's see, and boom! We see an apple. That's pretty fine. That's what I wanted to see here. So, and because I don't know if there is a personal background image, I do it like that. And let's see. So, we have access to the important data now. Yeah, personal background image, touch works fine. We go to the to the um, emergency call. And yeah, this is a pretty good thing. I just disconnect. Um, I just disconnect everything. So we are done. iPhone XS data recovery job. If you need data recovery, just come to rescue minus repair.com, mail in your device. If not, check the channel, check the other videos, give us like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Thanks a lot for watching and we will see us with the next one. You then.